Hi there. In our last episode, we explore how to write a very simple HTTP server using Go. We also learn how to exchange data from an HTTP client and how to deserialize the data that was coming from it. But exchanging data is worthless unless we have some way to persist that data. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to receive this data and store it into a MongoDB cluster. I'm going to use MongoDB to persist the data in this project. I have created a cluster. The name of the cluster is NodeKeeper, and it is inside of this organization and within this project. You can use any name you wish. The important part is that you have access to a cluster. I have created a free cluster. And if you don't know how to do that, please use the link that is included in this video in order to create your own free cluster. Now that we have created a cluster, please verify that you have a user that has access to the database and also that your IP address is included so you can access it from wherever you're running this application. Finally, we are going to go to the database here and get the connection string. That is done clicking on the connect button and then on the drivers option. Here it tells me how to use uh, how to install the package that we need in order to access the MongoDB driver from, in this case, Go, but there are other languages. And also, we have here the connection string that we need to copy. It is important that you know the password for that user that you created, and you replace it when you use this connection string. It will be the driver that uses this connection string to access the data in our cluster. Let's go with the code. Our starting point is going to be the code that we wrote for the last episode. This is a very simple HTTP server that uses two HTTP handlers. The first one is for the root URL with the get method and is implemented as an anonymous function that just writes HTTP caracola to the client. Second one is implemented as a proper function here. And what it does is deserializing the data that comes from the HTTP client into the types that I have defined previously and brings them back to the client. So the, these types are the node, which in turn contains a scope. And that's it. So now that we have reviewed this code, let's go to the go mode file. That is where the name of the project is uh, declared and the version of the Go language that we're using. There's nothing else here yet because we were basically using the code in the Go standard library. But now we are going to use the MongoDB driver. And in order to do that, we're going to type this command here that brings the MongoDB driver package into our code. So notice that when I tap enter, I add in the Go mode all these dependencies. The most important one here is the MongoDB driver, but these other ones are transitive dependencies that are required by the MongoDB driver to do its job. So we can close the console now and get rid of the Go mode. And I would like you to notice also that there is another file that has been added here. This file contains uh, hashes for all the dependencies. So in case something happens, something changes, it will act accordingly. So that's basically it. Let's go back to the code and let's add a variable that we will be using to connect to MongoDB. That variable is going to be a global variable. And that is not a best practice, let me tell you straight, because what you would like to do is to create a type that contains all your dependencies and then implements HTTP handler. So it is used as an HTTP server. But in this case, we're going to simplify it and we're going to de declare this global variable here, let's add some space here, and we are going to add manually the imports here so it doesn't complain about MongoDB not being available. Let's... 
So this is what we have now, the MongoDB driver, and it is going to be used in order to access MongoDB as a MongoDB client. This global variable, we have to initialize it. We have to connect to the MongoDB Atlas cluster, and we're going to do it right after printing hello and before we initialize our HTTP server. So let's add this code here, and we could do it as a short variable initialization. But if that is the colon equals here, which doesn't require to declare the variables uh, before. But if we do that, error would be perfectly fine because we haven't defined any error in this scope. But MongoDB client, the MDB client, will be uh, created on top of the other one. It will overwrite the MongoDB client that is global. It will create one for this scope. And this is not what we want. So what we're going to do instead is use regular variable and we're going to use it like that. So this should be the declaration of the error variable. And then with a regular setting, we uh, set the MongoDB client and the error as the output of the connect function. Notice that this function returns two values, not just one. So this is what we are going to use here. OK, if we take a look at the arguments that are required here, and just by hovering the mouse on top of the connect function, we notice that there is a context that has to be passed onto this function and also some options. Let's start with the context. The context is going to be defined here. And a context is what is required to send data to the request and also to communicate when things end. And in this case, we are going to use a, a context background. We could even add a timer here to um, be able to ensure that this doesn't take longer than expected. But we are not going to do this for this example. The next thing that we want to do is to have the connection string from our server. And the connection string is what we got from the web interface. And we're going to put that here. So let's define this connection string. Please don't use this one, not because of my user and my password that I'm going to delete right after recording this video, but because you won't have access to this cluster. It has to be your own connection string. So you should define it with the value that is provided by the web interface of your cluster. It is not a best practice either to use the connection string and hard code it here. A better option would be to pass it as an environment variable, and then you would set it from the outside in order to get access to this connection string. And now that we have both parameters, what we are going to do is to replace this implementation with the proper one. So now we are going to have the context defined, the error declared, and we are going to use the context as the first parameter and the options client with this URI, this connection string that we declare in order to connect to MongoDB Atlas. So let's add some space here and here. And that should be enough to access the MongoDB cluster. If this goes well, then we will have to the ability to send data and receive data from the MongoDB Atlas cluster. But what happens if anything goes wrong? Well, we have to check the error variable in order to be sure that we act if that happens. And what we're going to do is to basically say here that if error was a nil, then we want to bring that error to the standard error output and exit from our program. That is what log fatal does. So we're going to do that. And that's it. So that is what we should do if anything goes wrong. But what do we do if anything, if everything went fine? Well, the first thing that we want to ensure is that if everything went fine, we want to be able to ensure that this connection is closed properly. And we are going to do so by using a defer function. Here, I'm declaring a defer function that is used as a statement, and it uses this anonymous function to tell the compiler what I want to happen when this main function 
finishes. And th here what I'm doing is, if I'm getting an error from the disconnect, that is what I want to do, then I will panic. But basically, the goal here is to disconnect from the MongoDB cluster. With that done in the main function, now we can use this MongoDB client in our HTTP handlers. And we're going to do that in the create node that we have here. So what we are going to do in this handler is to get access to a collection which is similar to what a table would be in a relational database. We're going to do it right after deserializing the data. So here we're going to put this snippet, which is uh, using the MongoDB client to access the cluster that we have created, NodeKeeper. And inside of that cluster, inside of the, that database, we are going to access the collection, which is going to be called nodes. And I said, is going to be called because it doesn't exist at the moment. This database was empty. We have just created the, the cluster and there is no data inside of the cluster at this moment. Notice that contrary to what you would do in a relational database, there's no schema that you have to set before you are able to access a collection or a table in the case of a relational database. And that is because there's no constraint on what are the fields that are going to be required in the documents that we store in notes. At least not yet. We can set them, but we are, have decided not to initially. So we can store any kind of document with any attributes, any uh, arrays, any fields that you want. Now that we have access to this collection, we're going to have a command to insert the node that we deserialize from the request. And we're using the context that was passed on to us through the request, from, through the HTTP request. So if the request is canceled, we will know, and we will also cancel the conversation with MongoDB Atlas. We are getting two things here to one is the result of inserting the node in the database, and the other one is an error. And what we are going to do first, as we usually do, is check if there was any error happening here. So basically, I check if there is an error. If there is, then I return an HTTP error, and then the error of the database, and I set the status to internal server error. Could be something else, but for now, this is good enough. And one thing that is also not a best practice is to share the error of the database with the client. Probably you are leaking too much information here, so you better know what is happening and then send a custom error to the client. In any case, we have to do this before we write to the response writer. And that is because once you do the first writing to the response writer, the header has been written and there's no way to set it, the values of the header, particularly the in this case, the status, to anything else. So we do a error handling at the beginning and we do the, the return in case something uh, goes wrong because we don't want to continue. But if everything went fine, then we return the type of the value of the node that has been deserialized, as we were doing before. And also we're going to log the ID of the object that we have created. Okay, so notice that there are a couple of errors here. I'm going to solve those and then I'm going to compile and execute. The errors that we get here are basically that I forgot importing the context. So I'm going to import context and same thing for the MongoDB options. Now I don't have any errors and I'm going to try to run this code. So I click on the play button, and hopefully I will have my program running here. Now I'm going to open the terminal, and here I could have run uh, the program with go run main go. In this case, I'm not doing that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is to use the same curl command that I did in the previous episode to send this value to the database. And you will see that the data appears in the database right away. So basically, I'm going to enter that here. I get an HTTP OK, and that is the value that I have here. And if we go to our database, then we click on Browse Corrections. And here, I have the NodeKeeper database, 
with this collection that has been just created. And here I have the data that I sent from the HTTP client to the server, the program in Go that we wrote. And as you can see, all the values are here. This is the master plan. This is uh, the, the data that we have in the text, the two tags that we have, and the scope, which is an embedded object here. In this video, we have learned how to create a connection from our program written in Go to a MongoDB Atlas cluster and how to store data and how easy it is to connect to a collection because we don't need any prior schema defined in order to talk to the database. I hope you enjoyed the code that we wrote today. In the next video, we're going to talk about concurrency. Meanwhile, stay curious, hack your code. See you next time.